This is a 73-year-old gentleman with no metastatic CA pancreas with liver metastasis. PET CT in o October this year shows hypermetabolic mass with central necrosis over inferior aspect of unsynthetic process of pancreas, with numerous hypermetabolic hypodense bilobar hepatic mass consistent with metastasis. He was recruited to the RFA study, and the first ERCP and RFA was done in November this year, showing a 2. 5 cm distal CBD structure. First section of RFA done with a plastic stand is inserted. So this is the ERCP uh, film showing a distal CBD structure. So this gentleman is here today for ERCP and RFA for the second section and also an uncovered self-expandable metal stand insertion. Uh, so we start this procedure by removing the plastic stand. The duodenum is a little deformed, as you'd expect from pancreatic cancer, and uh, there was some difficulty in getting into the second part of the duodenum. And once we got in, we stabilized the scope, and the reason we had to do that is that initially we had to go very left and then turn right, a little different from what you normally do. You'll also notice that uh, my scope has a tendency to slip out into the stomach, so I'm trying to keep it more towards the right side to avoid that. So the first thing in this procedure we're going to do is to now first do a selective cannulation of the bile duct and we remove the plastic stent. Hopefully that should be easy. For this I'm choosing a, a cotton cannulatome from Cook Company along with an acrobat wire in this. The acrobat wire I like particularly because it's very easy to manipulate this wire. It's something like a terumo wire but I think it's a little more stiffer so you can do all your procedures on that. I have my elevator up and you can see my body is turning towards the right here so that the scope doesn't slip out. But we'll have to keep that position constantly, and I have a feeling that the scope may slip sometimes. So also I'm trying to adjust fluoroscopically, and now I'm going to get in there. With the, the elevator up, I have a feeling when the scope, the, the spintotome comes to the edge of the scope, and then I lift the spintotome up, and then I'm going to get closer. As you get close to the papilla, you have to turn a little left, and that's when the scope can get slippery. So now I go, I come, try and get very close. And then I'm putting my, again, when a spintotome goes inside, I try to turn my scope to the right to keep it stable. So Esther, can you push the wire? No, I'll just fluoroscope also. I'm trying to do a wire-guided cannulation. Uh, if the resistance, you tell me. Resistance, okay. So okay, then I just have to go a little more to the top there. Can you flex the spintotome? Can you flex it, bend it a little? So I'm bending. This, this is a, like a ball tip. It's got a very rounded tip, the omnitome, so it's safe in a sense that the incidence of pancreatitis is much less with this. Can you now, no? So there's some resistance. So one of the things when the resistance is, we like to inject a little to see the pathway before we go. Can you inject now, little? We'll see where it's going now. It's going anyway? Yeah, it's going into some duct there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So you can see the, the bile duct, I think, is structured quite long. So then what I'm going to do is now, I'm going to change my scope position a little so that the wire now goes, uh, uh, this just one second. So what I have to do is I have to actually straighten the scope. So you see, now the angle is more, so that's why the wire is not going in. I'm straightening the scope a little. Now can you see if we can pass the wire? So I'll just push the scope up like this so you can see better. Uh, so you'll have to go down and then go up. Okay? If you can't, then we'll have to change to a J-tip wire. Okay? So I'm now pulling up so that we get a better view, and then I'm pulling, pushing back, and you can see how we are gone in now. Have you seen that? Esther, can you inject? Can you inject? Inject contrast. So we keep injecting. Okay. So now I'm going to define the lower end of the structure. Yeah. The lower end of the structure is quite long mm -hmm. compared to uh, what we thought initially. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to keep the guide wire in place, and I'm going to measure the length of the structure before we select the yeah. uh, type of RFA. Okay, right, yeah. stop. Now, you push, keep pushing the virus, so we'll show you how the structure length has to be actually uh, calculated, okay? Now, what Esther is doing, is she's pushing the wire inside. You can you see the wire going up, yeah. So, yeah. wire has gone higher up now. I'll come back with my spinotome. Keep pushing, keep pushing, keep pushing. So, this is a common question often asked by ERCP, is how you measure the structure size. Very important. Mm -hmm. So, now I'm going to get my spinotome out. And as I come, get my spintotome out to the edge there, I'm going to see what is the, yeah, see the spintotome is right at the top of the structure, right? Yes. Yeah. Uh, sure, you can see that? Okay. We can, yeah, we can see yeah. that. Yeah. Now I'm going to just pull back on the spintotome, pull back, pull back, pull back, pull back. 
push, push, push the wire, I'm going to pull back. So the language is very important. I ask her to push and I'm pulling back, okay? Mm. Now I'm coming, I'm going now to going to see where the spintotom is. You can see the spintotom has just come out here, just at the papillary region. So yeah. this is the length of the stricture now. Dongwan is measuring it. Yeah. We always have this, uh, oh, it is seven, almost seven centimeters. It's a long stricture. Okay. It's always important to have this uh, scale with you. Made yeah. from Wilson Cook, very valuable. <laughs> <laughs> okay. yeah. Very useful. So I find that sometimes um, it's very easy to, and having the tendency to overestimate the stricture length, isn't it? Which is yes, what exactly. you're trying yes. the technique so not to. So sometimes, you're right. Because when you're overconfident, sometimes you've done many ERCPs, you think you have, this is the stricture. Some people, uh, especially the very senior ERCPs, feel insulted to measure the stricture. They say they can make it out there. But I think, uh, as you say, if you're overconfident, you get a wrong measurement. So <laughs> now what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave the wire in place. And uh, you can see SA is pushing the wire and pulling out. And then I'm now going to select a radio frequency ablation catheter to ablate this tumor. Now, there are two companies, but I prefer to use the StarMed, the Korean company, which has got uh, 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 very good electrodes. There are two sizes of electrodes available. 1.8, which gives an injury of about 2 centimeter length, and 3.3, which gives an injury of 3.5 centimeters. So in this case, probably, we, I generally prefer to use 1.8, yeah. but it's a very long stricture, so maybe we yeah. have to do several times. Yeah. So I think probably, uh, right? what yeah. we can do is, we can, uh, you I have... I think uh, after in insertion of the electrode, we can recalculate the proximal and distal part. Yeah. Because the electrode one. has metal tip, so yeah. we can so see we'll, uh, we'll how now much can we yeah. cover by... How much is the covering? Yeah. So we also like to, uh, if the camera can focus, the camera person can focus yeah. on, the, on the generator, this is, this is generator very important. We'll come back to you because we might have to wait uh, when you're doing this procedure as the uh, two minutes time is on. Uh, so that's a lot of boring time on live endoscopy. Okay. So what we're going to do is, first I'll show you this electrode. You can see that uh, in spite of the fact there's a long stricture, I've selected the shorter electrode of 1.8 or 2 centimeters. The reason why I do this is, in our experience and both with the animal work, we have found that the shorter electrode is better than the longer one of 3.3. So I select the short, although I have to overlap and do several times. I select this uh, 1.6, uh, 1.8 electrode. You can see there are four electrodes here. Can you zoom uh, in? See, can you see that, Sue? We can no? now. Great. Great. Yeah. So you can see it's one, two, three, four of uh, three millim, 3.3 millimeter each, separated by a short distance in between. It's always four electrodes. The difference between this and Habib is Habib is two electrodes. This is four electrodes. So this is multipolar. Habib is bipolar. And I think that the current that you generate from this is a lower current compared to what you get with Habib, and it's more linear. So there are some differences. The shorter one, I feel, is better because the current travels much better between these two electrodes. Okay. So this is the basic. Okay. This is seven French, so it goes in easily through the channel of the endoscope. And then I'm now going to check on uh, fluoroscopy that my position is okay. So now I'm getting the spin. You can see the electrode coming out endoscopically. Yes. yes. You'll also see it coming out on fluoroscopy. If you're getting the fluoroscopy picture there. So what I do is I, you can see that the fluoroscope, the top part is little covered. So I'm just going to push my scope out yes. down. Then you can see that I can see the top part. I'm going to come down a little so that I just put it there, just at the top. And you can see that will require at least two minimum sessions, like Dongman so suggested. So you place it just at the just proximal, proximal tip of the just, stricture? Just at the proximal just tip. Behind because the scope. Exactly. So because the reason is if you place it too much into the bile duct uh, on the top, if it's free, the impedance level goes up to high levels. You don't get the current. Cu current. So it has to actually hug the, the, uh, the stricture completely. So that's why I want to be a little, uh, I don't want to see the top part. You see very carefully. You have to put it just at the top of the stricture. If you put it more than uh, top into the bile duct itself, that is wrong. Then you won't get a good uh, burn. So you have to get it right into the stricture, exactly the top part. Because the amount of uh, injury that occurs over the electrode also is a few millimeters. So you cover yeah. the stricture. Right. So this is very, the placement has not given much importance, but it's very important to learn that. No. Now we'll start to activate the system. And mm -hmm. for that, I think the cameraman should focus onto the system here. If you can focus. Yeah, this the is generator. generator. Yeah. 
Yeah. Yeah. yeah, you start. You start. Mm. We'll show them what are the important. The most important part is temperature here. You can see the temperature is set at 75. It should be between 75 to 80. Mm -hmm. It adjusts automatically. The wattage is... 10 watts. 10 watts. But you see, wattage is fluctuating. Yeah, fluctuating. Which means wattage is not so important. The temperature should be maintained. And the timing mm. is 2 minutes. Timing is 2, two minutes. minutes. Okay. So, yeah. uh, to create a consistent ablation, uh, the effect of the temperature Maintaining the certain temperature is very important, not just one time, uh, to a certain period of time. So after many uh, ex vivo experiments, we set this parameter, 2 minute and the 75 uh, degree uh, temperature. Yeah. I think the other thing I like about the machine is if you look at the impedance here, mm -hmm. see the impedance also is measured. The impedance is very high. You know that it's not properly paced. It's probably too much into the bile duct. You have to get it down. Mm -hmm. So impedance, the time, the wattage and temperature, these are the yeah. four things. And always look at the temperature all the time. You're maintaining that 70 degrees. Yes. It's a slow cooking. It's yes. a dim sim cooking, right. not, uh, not frying. I, if you increase the temperature above 100, then uh, the tissue nearby the electrode will be uh, burned. And uh, it, it is causing carbonization. So then that layer actually, actually blocks the further uh, 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 the propagation of heat energy and uh, the impedance will be increased okay. too much then yeah. the the machine will stop so it is important the slower and uh, uh, long term uh, cooking and exactly not, yeah. not cooking but <laughs> not very appropriate term ablation yeah. yeah so it's i think this is very important keep seeing at this watch so how it's varying 1 to 12 it's going so that's the reason why the previous machines where the wattage is fixed I think we're not doing a right job. You're right. putting too much of charring to right. this. Whereas with this machine, temperature is the most important. It's got a cooling system. Yeah. Two minutes are over. Yeah. So we had to do a lot of gossip during the two minutes. So we did all this talking. <laughs> now that's over. Uh, so what we'll do is we have to get down and do another, uh, yeah. uh, also a lengthier structure. This is the second part. Yeah. So after this is over, we put in a self-expanding come uh, partially covered metal set. So I come exactly to the point where this half is covered and then we'll start the process. Mm -hmm. So again, I switch okay. it on yes. here and then it starts off. Okay, okay so Dr. Reddy, uh, we'll uh, let you keep going with the RFA. Um, can we have a new case, please? Okay, so, <laughs> so we have this uh, evolution stent on. I think I've seen it already. I have been given about nine seconds to finish this now. So we have the evolution stent on the acrobat wire, and you can see Dongman holding the gun there. The gun has to be employed like a regular gun. Only thing is, as the trigger goes on, the, the red knob that you get here comes to a stage where you can, the camera can see it. If it goes to this stage, it's a no-return stage. So we quickly do that. Can you, yeah. And if you want to reverse it, of course, there's a button to reverse it, but keep doing, keep doing. This is, I'm using a partially covered stent. I like to use a partially covered stent uh, for pancreas, lower end CBD, distal CBD. That's been an experience. And now I'm, what I'm doing, I'm pulling back as uh, Esther is pushing the gun so that the stent tends to ta stop, stop. The stent, you see, it tends to go up. So I want to pull back so that I see the yellow marker. That's very important. And you can put it a little long also in this case because the terminal five millimeters is uncovered. Yeah, now you can see, keep, now you can see very nicely on floor. Keep doing, keep doing. Keep doing, keep, 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 keep going, keep going, keep going. As soon as you come to a point of no return, tell me, Esther, then we'll remove the back. Yeah, this is yeah. no point of no return. See that on the camera? Yep. Point of no return. She's going to take out the safety valve on the back, and then we are going to fire the gun completely. Okay? Now shoot. Shoot, 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 shoot. Okay? You can see now. Okay, very nice. Okay. So it's got a nice lasso there, you can see. This lasso will help us to pull out the stent if you want to, but this is partially covered. After four weeks, it'd be difficult to do that. Before that, you can adjust the stent. Uh, I think this is uh, nicely put in. Very beautiful. Not ready. Thank you.